The objectives of this experiment are to determine the wavelength lambda of maximum absorbance, verify the stoichiometry of the complex, and determine the formation constant for iron 3 thiocyanate complex. Equilibrium to be studied. Iron 3 plus and thiocyanate in equilibrium with iron 3 thiocyanate complex. Safety. Safety glasses, goggles, lab coat, gloves, and closed-toed shoes are required for this experiment. Helpful hint, there are three different concentrations of iron 3 plus used in this experiment. Make sure you do not select the wrong concentration, as it will cause extremely erroneous results. 3.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar is used in part A. 0.20 molar and 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar are used in part B. Determination of the wavelength lambda of maximum absorbance. A visible spectrometer will be used to determine the concentration of iron 3 thiocyanate complex. Beer's law, simply put, says absorbance depends upon the thickness of the sample and the concentration. A equals epsilon B C, where A equals the absorbance, epsilon equals the molar extinction coefficient, B equals the path length the light travels, and C equals the molar concentration. Because the path length does not change, our only variable will be the concentration. We will prepare five samples which will have increasing moles of iron 3 plus and decreasing moles of thiocyanate. Burettes are used to measure the samples. One burette has 3.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar iron 3 nitrate, and the other has 3.0 times 10 to the minus 3 potassium thiocyanate. Use medium sized test tubes for the solution. Five different samples are listed in this table. Use burettes to measure the appropriate amounts of iron 3 and thiocyanate. You will need six cuvettes, one for each solution prepared for part A and one for distilled water, the blank that will be used to calibrate the spectrometer. For the best results, we need to use whichever wavelength has the maximum absorbance. The wavelength will then be used for measuring all the samples in part A as well as those in part B. To find out which wavelength that is, we will use sample A3, the 50-50 mix of iron 3 and thiocyanate. The range of wavelengths tested will be from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers in 25 nanometer increments. Record the absorbance at each wavelength. Fill one cuvette with distilled water for the calibration. Rinse a cuvette three times with the sample A3. Use the waste speaker. When you are actually measuring, the cuvette needs to be filled to a little over halfway. When inserting the cuvette into the spectrometer, the arrow at the top of the cuvette should be pointing towards you. Make sure the distilled water blank is wiped dry and insert it into the spectrometer. Close the cover gently. Select the starting wavelength and zero the spectrometer. After calibrating the spectrometer at the starting wavelength, insert the cuvette with A3 and close cover gently and measure absorbance. Change to the next wavelength and calibrate again with the blank. Remember to always use the blank and set the absorbance to zero for each wavelength. Insert A3 and measure the absorbance. Check all the wavelengths with the sample A3, 
zero the absorbance first every time, you will prepare a table like this. Once you identify the wavelength with the maximum absorbance, set the spectrometer to that wavelength for all remaining absorbance readings. Determination of the formula of the iron thiocyanate complex. Job's law, or the method of continuous variation, will be used to verify the stoichiometry of the iron thiocyanate complex. The principle of this method requires that you vary the number of moles of the two reactants while keeping the total number of moles of the reactants constant. A variable related to the amount of product formed will be measured. For this experiment, the variable is the absorbance and the maximum will be determined. You have already measured the absorbance of the sample A3. Now measure the absorbance of solutions A1, A2, a4, and A5, and record the measurements. Remember, you must rinse each cuvette three times with the sample that will be used in it. These absorbance values will be plotted against the milliliters of reactants. Determination of the formation constant Kf for iron 3 thiocyanate complex. Prepare the following solutions in medium test tubes and mix well. Remember the helpful hint that B4 uses a different concentration of iron than solutions B1 through B3. In mixture B1, there is 1,800 times more iron cations than thiocyanate anions, so this will push the equilibrium to the product side. Therefore, we can assume that all thiocyanate is converted to the complex. Use the same wavelength as in part A. Prepare four cuvettes. Remember to rinse each cuvette three times with the sample that will be used in it. Measure the absorbance of each of the solutions and record the values. Beer's law may be used to determine the concentration of the iron thiocyanate complex at the equilibrium as follows. The concentration of X equals the concentration of B1 times the absorbance of X divided by the absorbance of B1, where X is solution B2, RB3, RB4. To determine the initial concentration of iron 3 plus and thiocyanate, use M1, V1 is equal to M2, V2 to determine the new molarity after mixing all solutions together. Note, V2 will be 10.0 milliliters for all four solutions. Concentration B1 is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar times 1.0 milliliters divided by 9.0 milliliters plus 1.0 milliliters equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 4 molar iron thiocyanate complex.